Have you ever looked at a guitar and wondered how could you get the sound of a guitar to become so loud and played in a speaker? Well, thing is, for many years a guitar had been invented, but people were wondering the same thing. They're like, hmm, this guitar is quite soft. What if I want to use it in a concert? I want it loud. I want to record it. How do I capture the vibration of the string? So then came along inventors, people who are equally passionate about, I guess, physics and music, and they put together their interests and they have a, some handy engineering skills and they say like, wait, 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 wait. You know, guitar strings are, are, are steel, right? They're, they're metals, right? So we have just discovered that, you know, a, a, a metal flowing in the in electric magnetic field can generate some kind of current, maybe induced current or something like that. Maybe we can try out something. So then comes along this guy, Beauchamp. Beauchamp? I don't know how to pronounce it. In 1934, created the first attempt to pick up the vibration of the steel string and turn into an electric signal that you can you know connect to a socket and send to a speaker or something like that but the thing is if you look at the design there's huge magnets in there two u-shaped magnets right where the strings are there's north there's south there's north and there's south i have no idea what this guy was trying to do but it looks really complicated came along another person called guy hart shortly after this is what 1934 three years later this guy came up with another design patented patent it and it looks much different there's no gigantic magnets anymore but there are these tiny little blobs magnets much smaller but this wasn't the final uh, development that brought us to the modern electric guitar that we know today the last guy came along clarence leo fender and gang came along and says guys i got this we will finalize this as the electric guitar design we're gonna put little magnets in the the, the guitar to pick up the vibration of the, the the strings when you play music. I guess they just love, they're inventors, they love working their hands, they like physics, they like music equally as much, and their passion comes together, and ta-ta, thus was born the electric guitar. Now, if you look carefully at the electric guitar, how is this different from an acoustic guitar? Well, electric guitar uses one of the ways to amplify, capture and amplify sounds. If you look carefully at the electric guitar, you will see rows of little magnets right under the string. So you look here, there's one example here along. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, and there's actually quite a few of them. So when you have a string vibrating across like that, there will be some kind of disturbance, some kind of change in flux happening down there. So what exactly is the change in flux happening down there? I, I mean, we know there's magnets, it's got to be magnetic field. Is there current? Current in the string? Is the string the one cutting the flux? That's what we're going to figure out today. So, how does this magnetism work? Firstly, we got six magnets, one for each fat string. And you have a string and a magnet right underneath it. Now, this magnet is going to generate a magnetic field. Maybe if north is top, then you get a magnetic field. He said, miss, miss, I know. Maybe the string cut the flux. But why would you want that? You're going to have a current in the string. And it's not a closed loop. So it's you can't just cut the flux and generate something. There's another way this works. So are you ready? So there's a string that will go back and forth. But there is also what we call the pickup coil. Uh-huh. Induction on inside the coil. And this coil is the one that will receive a signal and send it out to a, com a mixer or a, a amplification speaker. But how does the steel string generate this? See, the steel string is not exactly a complete loop. So the nice thing is, hey, hey, the string actually is usually steel, sometimes other metals also, but the string becomes magnetized. You look at the picture on the right. The string becomes a magnet itself when it's there, near the magnet near the, the permanent magnet down there. So once it's magnetized, it's pretty much like you have a magnet and you're going to move it back and forth. We have seen this in the very first theory chapter. When you have a magnet oscillating up and down into and out of a coil, except that now the magnet is the, the string itself that's oscillating. So when you have this magnet or this string that will go up and down, up and down, up and down, this is the disturbance. It's going to cause a change in flux in the pickup coil to amplifier. So the, the induced current that is really measured here is this one. 
this current will be sent out of the guitar once the string starts vibrating. So when the string vibrates at some frequency, it's like oscillation, like we learn, simple harmonic motion. The string is going to do some bippity boppity wow 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 kind of oscillation. And this is basically a magnet, which is a string is magnetized. The magnet is oscillating. So there's a change in flux. And from there, you can have a current that comes out. Wow, 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 wow. At some kind of corresponding frequency. The phase may not be the same, but that's okay. Okay, so this is a conversion of mechanical energy. The oscillation of a, a, a string converted into an electrical energy. So electrical electricity is, you know, oscillating, alternating current. And you send that on to an amplifier. And from there, you can hear music. Because you see, all kinds of vibration transferred from the string to whatever pickup core is inside there, wrapped around the magnet inside there. too fast hang on a second so how does the the music wait, wait wait how does the electric current become the music that we hear oh i didn't talk about that part yet hang on a second or did i so once upon a time in the earlier section i've talked about how a mic can send a signal to a speaker and play the sound for you to hear so now we're going to change this a bit not sound anymore but we're going to have a string that oscillates and it, cause, it induces an EMF or current in the coil, which then you can send to what we call an amplifier. Now, the amplifier makes the signal bigger. If you have all these weird wavy patterns, aka music, you can make it louder, you can distort it, you can put in some capacitors to change the tone, throw in some op-amps to make it sound a bit distorted. You can put in all kinds of little electrical components, maybe some resistors, put in a potential meter, and you can adjust the sound. When you're satisfied with the adjustment, you like the tone, then you send it out to a speaker. Zum, 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 zum. So you send out the alternating current with the signal that you just adjusted to a speaker. And you get music. So what's happening here is that you're going to have uh, electric signal being fed to uh, this speaker, for example, current will be oscillating based on whatever note that is being played, certain frequency. But the speaker is a magnet and a coil as well, a motor. So when there's current, there is a force that will push the cone. So you can see like in the cone there, there's a round thing, right? That is the cone that is vibrating back and forth, back and forth. And that creates a longitudinal wave, compression, rarefaction. Boing, boing, boing. And you get this music that you can hear. Hope that was interesting. So that's all for this video. I will see you in the next one.